Hey guys, today we're gonna take a look at something different than usual. I wanna share with you the process of an illustration that I was commissioned for a book called Soil Look, and this is gonna be for the second volume. So you can see here I just started or already had some sky and clouds. This is because I actually lost the first 30 minutes or so of this process, but that's not a big loss. So the first thing that I did was establish the sky and the clouds just to get a sense of the atmosphere and lighting keys for my piece. And this is very important to me to establish early on because it helps driving the rest of the painting forward. And then, kind of in a traditional manner, I paint from background to foreground. Uh, there's not a real reason for this because, you know, in digital you have different layers um, so it's not a requirement to do that, but for this specific piece, I just felt it was more natural to work in that kind of way. One thing that was different compared to other projects was that the client provided a sketch, so the composition was already established and they also gave me references for lighting, direction and general color scheme. So this was very helpful in a way, but also set certain constraints that I would have probably done things differently if I had to start from scratch. So there were some pros and cons to this kind of approach. So back to the image, uh, you saw me just block out the hills to give a sense of form. I'm not really focusing on any kind of detail at this point because we're very early in the illustration and you see me sometimes just turning on and off certain uh, outline layers and those are layers that just give me an idea of how the image will need to be separated because if the client then wants to move the painting around just do a, a animation sort of thing they'll have this kind of frames to do that so now I'm jumping into the mid ground and starting to block out the city actually this is I think the first time I paint a, a town of this of this kind and I would say it was very interesting because you see once you zoom out you have a lot of very tiny tiny houses so it was a matter of sure following in the sketch but also make, making sure that the space is filled and the lighting works so it was definitely an interesting challenge to tackle this sort of piece and by the way, this video is sped up a whole lot. It's probably certain parts are up to a hundred per uh, sped up because they were just mindlessly uh, adding details or kind of boring to watch. So I just decided to, you know, sped some things up a little bit more than others. And you just saw me now trying to darken the trees because I was checking my values and I wasn't really happy with how the background was um, differentiating itself from the mid ground in terms of values so I just decided to do some tweaks in there and I'm at this point I'm still not happy with how that looks and it's something I'm gonna go back a few times over the course of the piece to try and fix I also wouldn't say that this is my standard process and that's just because I don't really have a standard process. Uh, it varies a lot depending on the piece and if it's a paid work or personal work. In this instance you'll see me just paint bits and pieces and jump around quite a lot and that for me helps keeping the piece fresh because if you just focus on an area, one, you might lose track of things, how they look in the whole picture and second you might just get tired of painting five hours straight houses and houses or just trees so it helps me keeping things a little bit more interesting just jumping around and you see at this stage we pretty much have a block out for the town in the main ground so the forms are blocked in and we have a sense of light and a sense of perspective so i can simply say that it's working now, we can move on to other things and then just come back to this later to add more detail. Okay. 
And now we're jumping to the foreground. So I just isolated the building from the sketch in the foreground. So I have them on a separate layer. And I'll simply just paint um, straight on the line art. I'm not just gonna go behind it. I'll simply go in and paint with flat colors on the line art. And it's just gonna serve to add a little bit more structure and detail to it. And I'll just have to clean it up later, which is not a big deal. One thing that helps when you're working, especially on such large images, is to flip your canvas constantly, because I find that it gets very easy to just be used to certain details or the way you painted something, and then you don't notice your mistakes. So one thing that I guess at this point everyone does is flip your canvas, do it often, and just check for mistakes. I probably don't do it often enough in this piece, to be honest, but yeah, always remember that, guys. In terms of light and color, I just stick to one of my usual palettes, I would say. And you see that is something that's gonna change for the final image because I applied some adjustment colors. I wasn't too fond of these kind of basic look. And I'd say basic because it's not bad per se, but it's something that I do very often and it kind of looks generic in a way. And I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting and unique. I'll see what I'm talking about later on. But basically this is a lighting scheme I used in a few of my other paintings. So we have very warm light and cool shadows. And when picking the greens for the grass and the trees, I went with a fairly cold greens rather than warm, because otherwise you'll have the whole image being warm. And in this way we have a nice hue contrast and temperature contrast, which helps So these are some of the parts that I really sped up a lot because, you know, there are so many tiny details in these buildings that if you had to watch them at a slower speed, it would feel like taking forever. So you're welcome. <laughs> There's another thing that's very interesting about this painting is that you could probably split it into three or four different pieces and they would just work as a composition for the cover itself. And that's probably what the client's going to do, just take pieces of these and use one for the front cover, one for the back cover, and then do different framing for social media. So, you know, as a single image, the composition is not amazing. But once you take certain pieces, they actually work really well. Like you can see this house now on the right. If you just frame these with the hills and the clouds in the background, it would work very well as a standalone image. And I guess at this point of the painting, it's just a lot of refining and adding detail. For example, now in the background, I'm adding clouds, smaller clouds, this to help the sense of scale and how big the other clouds are really. So you see, pretty much the painting is blocked out. I have a sense of where the elements are, where the values are. So by this point of the painting probably i don't know 10 hours in i don't remember honestly it's just you know arm yourself with some patience and go in and start refining the pieces sometimes it might feel like there's a lot to do but trust me once you have that piece established then the details is just a matter of you know some patience put on some music or podcasts 
and then just go through it. Some people really tend to focus too much on the detail early on and many people say there is no point in trying to polish a turd, which is a little bit harsh, but I would say the point uh, they try to make is actually very valid, which is if your basic painting is not strong, the lighting, lighting is not working or the perspective is off, then there is no real point in adding detail to the piece because it's not going to make it any better. But once you have your solid foundation, then you can just push the piece forward and forward by adding more detail or refining certain elements. So always make sure that your base is strong. And here you'll see me completely annihilating the tree because I wasn't liking the shapes and I wasn't liking how I was reading. So I just repainted it completely and now it has a lot more volume and I like it way more compared to what I had before. Oh, and this little bit here that we just seen, I quickly added some color variation and I link a video that I made on the topic um, about introducing color variety to your painting. One thing that I would say though is don't do like me in this instance because I added this color variation way too late into the painting which then means that if you added details you might lose some of those and you have to repaint things which ultimately might slow you down and that's not ideal of course. So when you're doing color variety try to work that in early on rather than later. Another thing you'll not see me do in this specific video is just a little bit at the end where I add some characters for scale because I wasn't recording then and it's not something very interesting because uh, they're very very small and just almost lots of colors to create a sense of scale because it was feeling a little bit empty without anyone. So just a bunch of small people and tiny props. To give a better sense of scale because if you notice there is not a there's not a clear indication because you know trees could be any size and houses as well like with doors and windows they give you a sense of scale but also not really so the more elements you can use to reinforce the scale of a piece the better it will be And we are about to approach the final stage of the painting where I had to do a general cleanup pass of extra details on the houses in the mid-ground and just some general cleanup on the foreground um, houses. And you see that is sped up even more because you would just get bored watching me painting all the single tiles on those very little houses in the mid-ground. So, yeah, that's, that's not a lot, there's not a lot to say about that. But you'll definitely notice what I meant earlier when I said don't add color variety too late to the piece because you run into issues. And you can already spot it in some places now, there are some little patches of blue light that I decided to introduce. but that actually made my life worse when I had to clean up the piece. So always be mindful when you introduce that variety.
Another thing I would say before we wrap this up is never be afraid to make changes. If you notice that something isn't working as well as you'd like to, don't be afraid to change it even if it's a little bit late in a painting because you don't have to be afraid of making mistakes or having to improve the painting. So here's the final result. As anticipated, the colors are a little bit different because I wanted something a little bit more unique and there are people, but that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed it and if you have any question, please let me know. And with that, I'll see you next time.